Do you think the pastor ravioli came from China or the wontons came from Italy? There are no doubts that uh, pasta and spaghetti were uh, Chinese. They've been found the tomb, uh, I think, a thousand years before, before Christ uh, with pasta inside. Oh, one ton. One ton. They were one ton. So I, I, absolutely it's China. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. Okay, let me reach here first. Congratulations. Oh, okay. uh, yes, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. It was, uh, it was great. Uh, it was like a little bit back to university. I did a, uh, did a course with uh, Santana University in Pisa, uh, Society and Economy in Contemporary China. So I'm very interested in these topics. And when I have discussions on cross-cultural management and how our two cultures uh, inf uh, influence each other, so Italy, I'm Italian, and, you know, and, Ch and I'm, I live here, I live in China. So how did, how did we uh, influence each other? Now, um, I have a brilliant idea for a sequel which would be the influence of the Ital Italian influence in, in China and see how perhaps, you know, I always say, well, okay, yes, sure, you know, the, the spaghetti could be, you know, could be from China, but what if they were actually from Italy and they were brought back from Marco Polo and uh, they g sure. gave the patent? Absolutely, <laughs> it's a good question and uh, it's something, and uh, there Two is way. another... I don't know if there is a young student here that uh, is willing. I'm too old for that. But, uh, for instance, Joseph uh, Needham uh, in 1960 published 22 volumes about the uh, discoveries of China, 22 volumes. But nobody has written, I don't know if it's possible, about what China took from the Hellenistic world, from Alexandria, from uh, because that was a period of extreme uh, powerful science. Uh, there were people that already measured the circumference of the planet Earth, uh, <coughs> mathematic. But uh, I don't know from clue if it's possible to publish a book on that. What China took from the Mediterranean. So if there is a young student here willing to do it. Yes, it would be amazing, wouldn't it be? <laughs> Thank you, grazie. Uh, so if Leonardo da Vinci was, say, half Chinese by blood, uh, what do you think would have driven him to be influenced by Chinese artwork or philosophy or whatever? I mean, I'm half... Czech by blood, but I don't really have an interest in Czech anything. Um, so, w was there like some kind of drive to know more about his roots or, or what? Uh, probably the fact that he was abandoned by his father. He was a bastard, that means uh, illegitimate, which was not a problem in Italy at that time uh, because many kings and the duke uh, were bastards. But uh, it was, it was, first it was a problem for a notary. His father was a notary. He could never be a notary if he was not uh, fully legalized. This he must have known from the beginning. Um, second, the father of Leonardo da Vinci had four wives. At that time, uh, and I was amazed to discover uh, to be a woman at that time was a very dangerous business because they marry at 13, 14, and they die at childbirth. So he had four wives. The first two didn't manage to have children, but they die at uh, below 20 at childbirth. Uh, so it was a very hard time. Um, so probably the new wives of uh, his father didn't want to do with his pastor son. So he was left with his mother. We don't know if his mother uh, had any influence, any remembrance of uh, his land, because probably she was kidnapped uh, when she was very small. And um, what else? Uh, besides his influence of his mother, um, what we can say that uh, 
there are no proof, basically, that uh, he has come to contact with other things. But probably was the drive to be accepted in society, being uh, the son of a slave, uh, that uh, made him look around, talk, and uh, explore. And as I say, probably there were uh, uh, some, some things coming from the East uh, which now has been lost. There are many proofs. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, the dome of, uh, of the cathedral of uh, Florence made by Bramante has been constructed with a system unknown before. But you find an older one in Persia 100, 150 years before Bramante. So it's difficult to believe uh, that they were not contact. Or even the tower, uh, uh, the bell clock. The first one was in Milano in Europe with the escapement. But in China, it was created uh, 400 years before. There, are, there is sketch about it. So beside that, uh, can, we can only guess. So this is more or less what we have. Okay, at the back. Uh, uh, good evening. Um, so thank you for yeah, the um, very interesting presentation. And um, I. I think uh, I totally agree we should uh, study more the mutual influence that in th at that time Europe or the Mediterranean in general and uh, Eastern Asia uh, had uh, on each other and maybe also what, whatever was in between those places. And um, there is one thing uh, I did not understand um, about uh, Leonardo's um, mother's origins, let's say. Um, so, l of course, this is a very controversial theory, so we're still trying to figure it out. But my, mm, what would I like to understand better, if it's possible, is let's say she was a slave uh, brought from, by the Mongols to Europe, to Italy. How can we say that she was because the subtitle is a Chinese scholar lost in Italy. So we should, I, I would, first of all, maybe I would like to understand what do you mean by Chinese? And second, if Chinese is what, as I understand it, Han Chinese, yeah. why, how can we say that she was Han Chinese and not anything else that was living in China, like any ethnicity, or maybe even Middle Eastern or yeah. something, you know, in between China and Europe? Sure. Uh, so I to have a more detailed uh, so, uh, explanation uh, of this point. Well, uh, Thank when, you. When you read the biography of Leonardo, they, normally they give one line to two lines to the mother. They say, uh, we don't know her surname, uh, probably she was a farmer in Vinci. So nothing is known. Then some documents were found that this Caterina, after she gave birth to Leonardo da Vinci in Vinci, she was given as wife to a handyman of his father, Ser Piero. It was, it, it was called the Attacca Briga, that you know in Italian means a quarreler, somebody, probably a soldier before. And they had uh, four, five children together. Um, what is the connection? For instance, uh, a few years back, there was the news that uh, the mother of Leonardo was uh, uh, from Arabia. Uh, this was made uh, guessing on the fingerprint, but this is a faulty way of reasoning because you cannot guess the ethnic origin of people by the fingerprint. You can guess very widely. Um, at that time, the slaves, before the fall of Istanbul, Constantinople, renamed Istanbul, in 1453, the slaves, 90% were classified as Tartars. So as we say before, only few cases there was the indication of China. But we discussed, they mixed the thing together. Tartar, China, same thing. So how can I guess that uh, was Chinese and not Mongol? Uh, I'm trying to guess from the artistic influence. We go back to the question before. Uh, uh, he's Czech, but he is not, he's not a Czech artist. We don't know. He's a 
something that I put it there, I try to support it. Uh, and there will be somebody else coming and will trash me, will say, make no sense. She was African. There were also African slaves in, uh, in Florence at that time. But uh, for instance, I sent the book to Carlo Pedretti. He's 84 years old, was the curator of the Bill Gates Code, because Bill Gates is so lucky that he owned a book by Leonardo, 36 pages, 72, 72 pages, 36 leaves. And he paid 30 million US dollars in 1992, now will be 150, 200. And uh, Carlo Pedretti said, yes, it's an exciting idea. And then he offered himself to write the introduction to the Itali forthcoming Italian edition. So, but when you talk of Leonardo, there is nothing sure. As I said before, everything is subject to discussion. Uh, it is, it's highly unlikely the slave is Chinese because the source of all the slave is sold by the cotton in Crimea. Yeah. And they get the slave by making a raid in the neighboring countries, which are yeah. Russia. They were also Russia. So it's highly unlikely they get the slave from all the way to China. But there are some. The, in the documents in Florence, ex yeah, is but the sources of the slave were from were captured by the Papa in the Crimea. And the sure. reach only to the west of Moscow. They never did go beyond no, Moscow. No, 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 no. So it's, it's, not pos it's not possible. Crimea, I accept that. Yeah. There are proof of uh, slaves in Crimea from China. Because, uh, because Azov, Tana, at that time was the end of the Silk Road. I accept your point. <laughs> okay. I, I brought the wrong book. Okay. Any other question? Okay, we have time for one more quick question. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, uh, thank you very much for your experience. Uh, I, I know uh, during 14th century, the Pope and uh, the King of France sent nine delegation to China. So that's uh, obviously Leonardo da Vinci saw some Chinese painting. So what I want to know first, if we can find some paintings of Song and Yuan before Da Vinci, but mainly it's Chinese later in than Italy? Yeah, in, in Italy or in no, Europe, no, that no, no, we haven't. Enough. And the uh, second question, if you have some painting of Leonardo Da Vinci in ink, instead of uh, what we, we see most of his painting, with the background of a Chinese painting. Yeah. That's uh, Saint, uh, Mona, Lisa, uh, Mona Lisa, Saint Anna, Saint John, yeah. etc. All of, most of them. But if he paint, he draw in ink, yeah. is no, that for all you? The painting brush of China, it was unknown at that time, in Europe. So he used uh, pencil or he used uh, metal point, uh, but the technique of using the brush with the ink, no, it was nobody knew in Europe. Sir, questions: Why it was ignored until now, five century centuries years later? You find this relation between this painting in China. No, but why that, people ignore it? Uh, the, because uh, because uh, without the, the chapter of uh, Renaissance library, they will lock you up in a, a mentally ill uh, <laughs> manicomia. If you don't know that, then you come up here and you say that, and uh, people ignore the fact that uh, Tuscany was full of Oriental slaves, they will think you are mad. But there are proof, uh, documentary proof, that there were a lot of Oriental slaves. Uh, they called them Tartars during a phase, but they were also Russian, African, Greek. Uh, the only condition was that uh, you should not be Christian. Uh, la last 
that point, I would like to seek your support because I'm preparing uh, one exhibition in the Chinese pavilion for the Expo Milano. Ah. That's ink, that's named verses in ink from Leonardo da Vinci. We know he didn't draw in ink, but we say it's the background of his paintings. Mm -hmm. And to uh, Castiglione, ah, Castiglione. Uh, he penned a lot of paintings in China in ink, and until Picasso, etc., all of the uh, big <coughs> masters in Europe and Chinese people that I nominated, transcultured fruits. So I, I hope you support this sure. uh, preparation. <laughs> so, thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Okay. thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Yes. Uh, I've recently read an article by Dorothy Parker from 1941 in which she talks about the functions of literature. And she argues that there are three functions. The aesthetic value, the form of a literature of books as a source of study for social values, but also as a social document, understanding history. And as I was reading your book, one thing that I was thinking is how actually these uh, three functions can be exported from literature to painting, and how from your book it emerged this very, very interesting, vivid uh, re depiction and recreation, reconstitution of history of Italy. And what emerged from your book is this very strong image of a multicultural country. And I think one of, other than just simply pushing forward your thesis that uh, Leonardo uh, Mothers uh, was Chinese, is this uh, historical reconstruction of the past, which is so important to understand our present. So I think in that sense, your book becomes very important also as a, his, uh, as a historical source, as a future reference to trying to put together all this puzzle, all this lack of this information about Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. So congratulations for your thank work. You. And many thanks for coming <laughs> to share with us. Yeah, thank you very, very much. And many thanks to our audience. Uh, we look forward to see you in other uh, okay. events that we co-organize together. Many thanks and good evening. Thank you.